Hi, and welcome to Sailing Vertican. We help people transition into and survive the blue water cruising life. My name's Kim, and today with me we have my husband Simon and our friend Travis from Sailing Vessel Party of Five. We're going to talk to you about our recent lithium battery install. Now there's loads of videos out there about lithium battery installations, but boats are like snowflakes. Everyone's different and every install is different. By providing you with our story, the hope is that it will help you with your future experiences if you do choose to go down the lithium battery route. So let's jump into the big question. Why get lithium in the first place? Lithium has some advantages over lead acid or AGM or gel batteries. Number one, they're very efficient. So they don't waste power uh, into heat. In reality, when you change to lithium, it's like getting 20% free solar because you're not wasting a whole bunch of it to heat the batteries up. The second thing is their voltage is much higher and more constant. So your equipment aboard runs better. The third and probably the best part of them is they're a, they can be drawn deeper, so you can you get more out of a smaller battery. They're lighter, um, and their their life is 10 years, so you get a 10-year battery life on them. The size of the actual case is the same as lead acid. However, you get probably twice the capacity. Even better, it weighs half. Actually, it weighs a third, about a third of a lead acid battery. So that's the great advantage. Is I think on your boat we calculated you dropped 630 pounds or yeah. something like that. Yeah, which yeah. is incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. So you can charge them up much quicker, do not you? Ah, uh, yes. They because they're so efficient, they'll take whatever you can put into them, pretty much. Yeah, but also it's reducing the use and the time that the generator's working. I'm now not servicing it every six weeks. I'm now servicing it maybe two or three times a year instead of eight times a year. And every time I change that impeller, it's $50. Yeah. So those are the benefits from the blue team. What about the pink team perspective? The reason I wanted lithium is because when you're using a generator, you want to use the generator to the highest efficiency. So when I turn the generator on, I make water, I cook something, and I do a load of laundry. And then I also heat the water. Sometimes I'll put the air conditioning on because the generator likes to have a full load. And I like to use the maximum capabilities of our power. So with lithium, on the other hand, if I want to do a load of laundry, I just do a load of laundry. If I want to cook something, I don't have to go over to the panel, turn the generator on, cook something, and think, oh my gosh, I should do laundry and make water too. So from a pink perspective, it just makes life easier. I don't have to cram all these different operations in when the generator's running. So it just makes your life a little bit more normal. Okay, so before you're going to switch to lithium, what are the things that you have to think about before making that change? Well, it's, I think it's the, the cost because lithium batteries are very expensive. The batteries cost me 6,400 US dollars and then I had the protector, the alternator protector, that, that was about $150. It'll probably cost you to do, if we did it on hours, probably just over $7,000. There's a bunch of technical issues too. Lithium batteries, even though you'll hear people call them a direct replacement or a direct drop-in, they really aren't. You need to consider, just the same as if you switch from lead acid to gel, you need to consider your charging sources and make sure that everything you have can be programmed to charge the lithium properly. Uh, that's probably the most major consideration. Okay, well, why don't you guys like walk us through like the whole like what we did? It came time that we had to swap out batteries. Yes. So it was either do we go back to the Trojans? So I'm looking at costings and price and how long these would last compared to actually the Trojans, and in the end, it worked out to be cheaper to do the lithiums for the lifespan as long as we spend ten years on the boat. <laughs> So we ended up with the Battleborn ones. That yep. They were the best value for money, and I got I got quite a nice little deal with them. They said they wanted nine hundred and fifty dollars each, and I ended up getting them for eight hundred and fifty dollars each, which was a good so, deal. Which is a good deal. So there's a good tip: make sure to negotiate. Oh yeah. Technically, once we'd picked the battery, some of the problems we had is the battery box on Britikin is of a limited size, mm -hmm. so we were kind of strapped to. The configuration of the battery so we had to measure and decide the best way to fit the batteries in the other constraint we had is Britikin is a 24 volt boat which 
uh, adds some complexity to it because you now, batteries are typically sold in 12 volt configurations, the Battleborns, um, especially at that price. So now we ended up having to do what's called parallel series so that we could get the amp hours that we wanted. Um, so those were all things we had to kind of think through and design for. In the end, it worked out really well. I mean, it, it turned out to be a really nice install. One thing we did have to do, we had to take out the uh, engine oh start matches, didn't we? Because um, we couldn't fit we couldn't have fit we them couldn't all have in. Fit. So yeah, now he starts on his lithium battery bank, uh, as opposed to starting on his own start batteries. However, we did leave the start battery for the generator as a sort of backup. So he could start his generator and get the battery charger going, which would most likely, after a few minutes, give enough current to start the motor. So it's it's still not uh, a single point of failure. And that one is on 12 volt, which makes yeah. it even more complicated. Yeah, but it was only just one battery, wasn't correct. it? Correct, yeah. Otherwise, we'd have had to have six batteries instead of eight, wouldn't we? Yeah. The, currently, they have 24 volt at 400 amp hours. Yeah. Um, you know, equivalent to 800 amp hours on a 12 volt volt. So if they had dropped, they would only have 300 amp hours. So removing the two start batteries allowed us to go to a higher uh, amp hour. So what amp hours do we go to and from? Believe it or not, we ran on 150 amp hours. And we went to what? 400. 400. Oh, big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Over double. The people are going to go, how did you run on 150 <laughs> amp hours? Very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> And they were still good. They were still good batteries. They were still good. You, st I mean, we tested each one, and Simon actually found buyers for them. They were all in pristine shape. Did you? Um, I offered him. So how many batteries does he have on there? Four. He's got four. We'll yeah. get there one day. He's not doing too bad. No, yeah, it's getting them. So it's it's getting them. Yeah, and he's got to lift oh, them up. He's got to lift them up himself. Oh what? bless. They all held their voltage. They all had good voltage on them. So. Yeah but they just were underpowered for so, so this boat. So swapping out batteries isn't as simple as taking the old ones out and putting the new ones in and connecting them up. There's other stuff that has to happen. So can you walk through what we had to do to make it all come together? No matter who does lithium batteries, one of the main concerns is your charging sources, like we've mentioned before. They all have to support um, <clears throat> being able to program so that they can charge lithium properly. Lithium are actually much easier to charge than lead acid. They don't require all the crazy uh, bulk absorption, floats, settings that you would require. So you basically have to dumb down your charger. In your guys' case, your alternator was externally regulated, so we actually could, uh, could dumb it down. However, the external regulator was original to the boat, was made before lithium batteries, so it was not able to dumb down. We actually had to replace the external regulator with the more modern one which allowed us to dumb that down. The other thing we had to do, which is every boat is slightly different and on yours, we needed to buy an extra device that allowed us to change all those settings uh, <laughs> using a computer. So Mastervolt's kind of got you there. If you yeah. have Mastervolt equipment, you need this extra device. Their solar equipment is modern. Uh, it's completely compatible with lithium batteries and there's even a charge regime on Battleborn's site on what settings to put into it. So that one was easy. It was just the, the house charger and the alternator that we had to adjust. Yeah. The house charger was easy. The alternator was a little bit difficult because the other thing we realized is there are two alternators on this boat. They have one uh, 150 amp large alt frame alternator that we were most concerned about. And then there's a smaller, the original to the boat alternator uh, and unfortunately, our original plan was to disconnect it. We unfortunately realized we couldn't because he'd lose his tachometer <laughs> and the large frame alternator being original to the boat didn't have a tack wire on it. So we couldn't just move over to that one. We ended up having to run both of them, but we've set the large one to override the small one. So yeah. essentially the small one's just along for the ride um, and not really providing uh, any current. And uh, how many times did you guys blow yourselves up? <laughs> I did, I did once. Yeah, we only made sparks like three times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in the engine. Boom, oh, yeah. Oops. Did you cut the two wires together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, before we finish this video, there's a couple of things that I've heard about lithium batteries and I'm wondering, you know, other people might be thinking the same thing or have the same questions. One thing I've discovered is that there's a massive difference between the cost of batteries. We know someone with the exact same boat as us that paid 35,000 pounds for lithium. What's, what's up with that? There's multiple lithium 
um, solutions on the market and some are different and there are certainly the ultimate premium lithium installs out there that are tailored for boats that do cost that kind of money. There are advantages to them. Um, typically you don't go with something like that unless you actually have electric motors in your boat like your boat is fully electric. So I encourage people to research and pick the right solution for them. They each have their advantages and disadvantages and you certainly can run up the cost if you go for a premium brand. Okay, my other question is about fires. When I told my mom we were getting lithium, she's like, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna blow up. What's the, what's the scoop with that? We keep saying the word lithium batteries and although the batteries we're talking about do contain lithium in them, they are not like a laptop battery. They are not like a cell phone battery. They're a special LIFEPO4, L-I-F-E-P-O4, which is lithium iron phosphate. They're a much safer technology than traditional lithium batteries. And I want to point that out because I think people don't understand yeah. um, and they haven't researched it and they, they think of laptops catching on fire you know, at schools and these batteries are not like that. They're the only batteries to date, lithium batteries certified to fly on airplanes. Yeah. So they can be used actually on an airplane to power uh, systems. Uh, they are not like a, a lithium polymer battery. I just want to make sure that people understand that. So we've had the batteries for about two weeks now. Simon, what are you thinking? Uh, so far, I love them. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's something that I wish I'd done. It. I wish I'd done two years ago, but I'm happy that I've done now because of the technology and everything. Uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm super happy with them so far. Uh, the boat is a heck of a lot quieter not having to run the generator all the time. So two thumbs up from me. Just thinking about the whole installation. Did you guys have to use the uh, customer support of, from Battleborn or anybody else in the process? Uh, how did that go? Um, we did. We used both. Uh, we reached out to Mastervolt when we first started uh, to ask them about the external regulator. They were really helpful, uh, made the suggestions, told us what parts to buy. Yeah. Uh, we then reached out after we had uh, done a layout uh, and we were pretty sure how we are going to lay the batteries out. We reached out to Battleborn with a schematic to show them what we were going to, how we were going to install them to make sure that they okayed the install and they responded back to you in, I don't know, eight hours maybe? Yeah. Uh, after he had sent the schematic, so that was... Yeah, it was good because yeah. it, it was quite a big time difference between us and them and they were great and the only issue we had was with, they, I don't think they've sent many batteries to uh, Grenada and um, it was just a bit of a, a, with the addresses and all sorts of things like that. But I thought Battleborn were great. I really, I really recommend them. So the customer service was good. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with them. And a 10-year warranty. I mean, <laughs> ten -year how, warranty. how do you beat a 10-year warranty? <laughs> Pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Looking back over the install, is there anything that you'd change about it? Do it in a cooler country. Because <laughs> we were <laughs> yeah. sweating like mud. Yeah. <laughs> that's about yeah. it, really. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. 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 Do it in air conditioning. Went, yeah, it yeah, went, went perfect. Went, yeah, it went really well. Yeah, it went perfect. I don't think there's anything I changed. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, brilliant. Before finishing the video, I thought I'd show you some behind the scenes footage and some outtakes. While Simon and Travis were doing the batteries, we had people come and visit us. And uh, Travis's daughter is the same age as our daughter, and they get along really, really well. The girls decided that we were going to adopt Travis's daughter. They made a contract, and this is the reaction that Travis provided after asking if we could adopt Daphne. Please. Okay, singing it through there. Wait a minute, I gotta read this. Oh. Do you need some the adoption of a Daphne Elaine Lynn Wisniak? Oh. Please, my dad singing it through there. Please. Done. Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so Daphne has two other brothers, so. I think she was really excited to have uh, swap out her brothers for a sister. So uh, the girls made up their bedroom and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very entertaining while the battery install was going on. Daphne and Sienna, what's the say, room? Oh my gosh, look at you guys. So you got, Sienna's got up here. Daphne, you got your new bed since you've been adopted here. We love Kim Brown and Simon Brown. I am a brown. <laughs> and if you look I am a brown. And if you look behind the door. Yeah. Oh, you're a whiskey. 
Emma Brown. Daphne Brown, Sienna Brown sisters. You, you might want to see how your daughter's transitioning to the new family. <laughs> Hey, you know, Daph, you want to stay here, you got to pay the Britican experience. Yeah! <laughs> I'll pay for her. I got $27. In the end, Daphne's mom did not sign the contract. She said, no way, I'm not giving up my baby girl. And who could blame her, because Daphne's a beautiful person. Now, with lithium, if... Sophie, 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 this is Water Phoenix. Should I talk? Or should I get up and turn it off? Water Phoenix, are you calling Sophie? Oh my gosh, I need to turn off the radio. Uh, yeah. And Sophie, this is Water Phoenix. You want to go up one? Uh, okay. I wonder if any of that's good. All right, I'm just going to see what came out of that. And I was all sweaty, and guess where I got the tail? <laughs> <laughs> Can you, you can you can you in there and see if you can get it? No pictures of my butt crack. Are you guys happy? Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> I just want to put a big thank you out to my good friend Travis on Party5. Without him helping me, I would have struggled and also thank him for helping us make the video. For a full breakdown of our power sources and everything we used on this installation, look at the link below. If you want to see my actual batteries, why don't you come and join us on the Britican experience?